Hello, welcome back. I'm Helen Hagen and my friend Renee Capilano will join you later. These are things that through my nine children I've used over and over again. And you know, sometimes you just really need 10 minutes and you want something for your child to do in the high chair where you're trying to kind of do something else. And that, you know, an alternative to, you know, another time you're plugging in in front of the TV. So the big thing about these is they're small pieces that you can easily cut off and do well for your child. You can use them kind of as a boredom buster if things are getting, you know, the same thing and they just kind of need a break. You can use them when you're also kind of trying to make dinner. But the really great thing about these is that they connect together in a way that really still allows for that brain building, that growth development that we want for our children as toddlers. And so this is kind of a win-win. They're short, they're easy, they're fun, but they're still building towards these big ideas of these big thinking skills that we want for our children to grow up and be thinkers. So let's get started. So here you can see he's getting started for the big reveal. You know, we've made bread before, but he knows that this is a different thing. And what it is is I've used a giant tub of bread. I've you know, tripled the bread uh, recipe and I've used extra yeast and I've also let it rise much longer than usual. And so he can tell even before he looks under there that it's become huge, right? Because the big idea here that I'm going for is that things change by expanding or by growing. This is this is part of what's gonna happen in your world, and this is what you wanna be looking out for. And you can see that he's delighted with this. He's poking it, and it's much different than Play-Doh, right? Because he can feel that there's gases in there. He's poking it, he's his little own scientist, smelling it, he's gonna taste it a little bit. He's, he's already part of this process, and when these things happen in my high chair, when these things happen at the center table, I'm thinking about what's going on here, right? Exciting things are happening, they're coming my way. And so um, he's also going to have the fun of, you know, when it comes out, out of the tub, patting it, you know, beginning to, you know, explore the idea of kneading. And this is going to become four different things in the end. So each time I'm showing him, you know, I'm showing him the second rise too. And each time he's feeling the gases that are in there and he's starting to think about, okay, this is, this is a way that things expand. This is a way that things grow. By dividing this in four section, it keeps growing, it keeps expanding. Each step of the way, he can feel, um, I'm not having him ever pound it and let all the gases out, right? I'm making sure that it's gonna keep going. And you still can make bread out of this. Of course, you know, it's over-risen, so it's going to, or proof whatever you're gonna say, it's going to be a little bit different, but it still works out. So he's going to, you know, obviously we're gonna make, you know, normal uh, loaves of bread, but we're also going to, use focaccia because it works particularly well when you have had that um you've you know you've oh you've risen it more than you probably normally would and this is a very fun thing for kids because of course as you pull that bread out and they can put their fingers in there they're really again feeling those gases and they're also feeling the oil go in there as well right so the oil will get absorbed later so that's another great way to think about um things expanding Okay, so here you can see this jar. And what this is, is yeast. It's just dry yeast. And so first I'm letting him uh, kind of get a smell of the yeast and, you know, turn it around a little. And those little tingle, tingle, tingle sounds of those little um, yeast pellets are pretty intriguing. But then I'm adding pretty warm water. And, you know, I'm not letting him do it in this case because, as you know, when you hydrate your yeast, you have to, that's pretty hot water there. But um, then I, he can immediately see the yeast bubble and make up the gases. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm using a taller jar and he can still, he very much can smell that, he can see that, and it's very easy then to explain to him, hey, this is what's getting, was in the bread, and you can see how this is expanding, and this is going to make the bread expand. And it's okay if they don't exactly understand it, right? But you're just helping them to start to put together how things don't just magically happen, like this bread didn't just poof, it just, oh, oh my gosh, what happened to you? That there was a reason for it, right? And he can still feel that gas in there later as he's pounding on the bread and playing with the bread. And he can think back again to that jar of yeast when we're hydrating our yeast, when we're adding the water and seeing that yeast bubble and ferment uh, can be, is, I think it's really a great step to understanding this and making it a, a project that adds that depth and builds in that way that, I want to always be building and building and building on things to make it them connect and make it all solid for them. So 
the bread is great. And after the bread, because it's so fun then to cut up, I'm, I'm putting this in one of these. This is actually a makeup container, and I use these all the time for meals. My little sweetie calls these the wow. You know, sometimes they'll even say, can we, you know, wow, can we have a wow? And uh, what it is here is, you know, it's, we're, we're taking a lot of things and, you know, putting them together. And I just wanted to bring this up at this point because I really want to show how I'm constantly trying to connect everything in his life to build that brain growth and that brain development. So if you've watched my videos, you know that he's made, he's grown tomatoes, he's made tomato sauce. That's there. He knows how that got there. He's gone to the farm. He's seen the cow get milk. He's made butter himself. He's, you know, now so that melted butter in there, he knows exactly how that that happened. You know, he's made this bread, it's cut in these slices for dipping, it's very fun, or at least he thinks it's very fun. Um, he's made soft cheese, he's grown basil that's in there, and so this all makes sense to him, right? This all connects, and this is all part of his world that he's understanding, and this is encouraging him as he's eating this, I'm, you know, encouraging him to think again how this all connects, how this all goes together. So what are some other ways that you can talk about things growing and expanding? Another way to do this is, of course, through growing. And so you can see that these are these little seed discs. And uh, at first, he just found this is a very enjoyable to use as a puzzle, right? Because it's all the same thing. You poke them in, poke them out. And so I think it's always great to let kids kind of play through things, even though, you know, I sort of have this agenda of like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna do these seed pods, they're gonna, uh, you know, these little seed growth things are gonna grow, this is like, when he's enjoying it in a different way, I'm always gonna take the time to let him do it. And, you know, I went and watered some plants and <clears throat> wrote a, a Valentine's card to my aunt, and then he's, he's still, he's still going with that. What happens is, of course, these seed pods, when you, are little starter discs. When you add water to the peat, they grow. A really interesting thing here is that he's already realized that, because of other experiments that we've done, that hot water reacts differently with things than cold water. And so we actually had put some cold water in here and it wasn't working as well. The direction say to use warm water, but you know, you always wonder. And so it's fun to try it with them. So when we put the warm water in there, you'll hear him saying over and over again, hot, 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 hot. Like he's really yeah. thinking already, hey, this warm water or this hot water makes it happen faster. But right before his eyes, this happens pretty quickly, he can see those seed pods as they absorb water growing, 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 expanding. This is something that I found toddlers want to do more than once. It's, it's so visual, it's so quick, it's just very interesting to them. And of course, Connecting with that, if you wanted to, you can just leave them out and they'll go back almost the same as you let the water dry out. So that itself can be pretty interesting. But you can also, of course, start this idea of growing stuff in them. And so, um, you know, he put a little, a few seedlings in here. And I think the really important thing for this thing that you're trying to have happen is to show them, you know, you can just do it in their high chair if you want these little seed pods, and you want to try to catch it, I think, when they can actually see, like you see this picture, that the seed itself is still connected to the seedling. So they really get that idea, right? The seed is expanding itself, right? The seed, this is part of the seed. It didn't just, there's not, it's not like there's no connection. It just magically happened. No, if they can see the seed and they can see it as it continues to grow. So again, this is another way. Things are growing, these are expanding. It's the same material, it's the same seed. It was the same material, you know, that you put into making the bread, but each thing still has this ability to change and grow. So another toy that you see all around are these little um, sponge toys that are in a, um, you know, sometimes they sort of look like a pill or they look just much smaller. You put them in the water, in the warm water, and of course they expand. So this is just another way that you can do this if you'd like to. Another quick way, and I'm actually doing a whole video on plants with toddlers in the winter, but this is just a, a, a quick thing here is, um, you might not really think about it, but growing sprouts. So it's very accessible to your toddler. You just throw those seeds in the you know seed container, and this is something that they can take some time on every day. Again, it's a boredom buster, but it also can be a thing that um, you, you maybe need some more time, and, and just can't rack it. So as you probably no, you have to water sprouts, you, you rinse them the top twice a day. So this, there's, 
these ample opportunities for them to, you know, water those. And they grow so fast. You know, it's just a matter of days and your sprouts are growing. And because, of course, there's just water there, they can pick up the, the bottom and they can see the seeds. They can see the sprouts growing. And, you know, that's great in itself. But you can see here in this picture that uh, it's also something that toddlers like to do over and over again is to pick the sprouts. So you can see here in this video that, you know, I don't, lots of time can be used happily picking these sprouts for your toddlers and it may make them much more likely to eat them on their actual sandwich too. But even if they're never going to eat them, just this process of picking them, they're looking at the seeds, maybe they see somebody else eat them. It's another thing that shows them that things are growing. Things can grow, things can expand. I think that throughout this, one thing you may want to do is be showing your child pictures of themselves so that they get the idea, oh yeah, this happened to me too, right? I'm growing. So whether you're just going to show them pictures of how they've changed or if you want to incorporate a, a thing on the wall where you mark off to them like how tall they were when they were born and show them how tall they are now, this is, this is a nice way to round this out. So this first piece is all these different ideas that are tying together this thing that you really want your child to know, right, about the world. You want them to be the, the person who's thinking through all these things. And the idea that things aren't just going to stay the same, right? Things are going to expand. Things are going to grow. Renee, what do you think? Helen, these are such great segments and such great things to do with your toddler. Uh, so much is wrapped up and tied into uh, just even one of these activities. These are sensory activities. These are motor skills. These are critical thinking. Um, I love what you're doing with the bread and the yeast and, and seeing something grow out of something so much smaller and just completing that circle of the puzzle. Of, of what he's been eating and how he's been making his food. And, um, and I, I really love the seed pods. Um, that is such a, a, a tactile thing. Not only what's going on in his brain, but picking those sprouts and those seeds and watching it grow. Uh, so many skills and brain connections being made with your toddler. And and these are simple activities, most of these. And these are activities that most of us enjoy all the way up our older children and even as adults who doesn't like to need some bread and the smell <laughs> of the bread. And uh, all of your senses are involved in these activities. Um, uh, these are great, great things to do with your toddler, Helen. Thanks. Thanks, Renee. Okay, so we're now going to go into a different section. And this is the idea that sometimes things change shape by breaking into smaller pieces. This is something that's going to happen over and over, over again in their lives. But what I'm putting into this is, and then what happens? Do they all, always stay broken in different pieces or are there different options? So here's a really simple one. And this is something that he did a lot when he was little, really little. So in this particular video, he's not seeming so interested in it because he's done it a million times. But this is a pasta roller if you have one. And you can just let your child roll so many things, saltine crackers, chips, uh, graham crackers that you're going to use later to make a pie. And the thing about this, obviously, is that you, you can't put it back into the cracker, right? But they can smash it up and whether they are going to roll it and eat it, or you could probably see in this first video that the dogs are always there, right? Because they know things are going to come off of the rolling thing. So the dogs are sort of hovering around so that they can get some of that. But that's one of the first pieces of this that you might want to do. Another thing is to think about what they can cut up. And one thing is butter. <clears throat> and since he's had this experience of making butter, and he loves butter, this is, a, this is one really obvious way. And I think that you may know that you can find butter that's already molded, so it's even you know, a little more fun. Um, so this is a turkey. And if you make sure that it's not too mushy, that it's just going to collapse, you know, you want to make it firm enough that they have to cut off the pieces. It's a very safe sort of way to experience cutting, which is really interesting. Butter is delicious. But this idea that it's going to come into many different pieces. And, you know, as it starts to melt, <clears throat> he's sort of smelling it. He's thinking like, okay, yeah, this is, this is happening. It's, it is starting to kind of whole part, but I, I am the person cutting it in many pieces. And so then if you take what's left of it and you melt it, of course, this is even a different way that it, you know, it was, it was in small pieces. 
But then in this particular case, you can put it back in that butter mold and it will mostly change, keep the same shape. Or you, know, you could also do this just with a square or anything. And so in this case, you're showing um, them the idea that even when things break into little pieces, sometimes things can go back to be pretty much the way they were before. So that's a fun way to, to, to kind of um, segue into that. So uh, you can also use ice. This is, um, <clears throat> you know, you have to be a little more careful with ice. Of course, you don't want it to break and get into their eye or something. So I actually did this one, uh, this piece outside where, you know, I had a big tub. You've got the ice. You can take the ice out and, and it's a big piece. You can break the ice in pieces, but you can put it right back in the tub. You have to add a little water. And again, it can go back. Right, so this is a different way that this can happen. Uh, another video here is noodles. So I get those extra long noodles. And again, he, this is something that lasts for a long time. I found toddlers like to do this over and over again. That snapping sound is so satisfying. But by breaking up the noodles into many pieces, I'm giving him this idea too. Like it started as a big noodle, it breaks in different pieces. And then in this case, we're going to cook it. And so it's going to come back to him and it's going to still be different. It's going to have changed yet again, right? It's not going to go back into that big noodle again, but it's still going to be um, a way to think about how things come together and can come apart. Another way to think about this is a, a favorite of my toddlers. And so this is, this is when he, this video is from when he was, you know, obviously younger. And you just place uh, you know, sort of a wall of clothespins. So it appears to be something that's there forever. You know, it's stuck on there pretty well. But as they take off each piece of clothespin, they're changing it, right? No longer is that wall there. It came off and they did it. If, you're, if your child is a little older, they may be able to put them back as well. This is a really fun activity, but again, it's this idea that something appears to be one piece, but it can come apart and be, um, many pieces again. So this is this idea that things can break into many pieces. Sometimes they go back together and sometimes they don't. Another really key thing to understand as a toddler. So for the last piece of this video, we're going to do sometimes things change because they dissolve. Okay, so this is very fun for your toddler, right? And um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, probably the easiest thing to start with is sugar. And again, you know, you may very well want to use uh, water that's a little bit warm. It helps it dissolve quicker. And it, it just happens, right? It's just poof, it dissolves. It's, it's, it's magic. It happens. You can do this with so many different things that, you know, it, I've done this where pretty much every day we're doing some part of it, right? Um, but when you get to salt, and he's doing salt here, and you're, each time you'll probably see him, he's being his little scientist, he likes to taste it, he likes to smell it. But when you get to salt, one thing to do after they've all got the idea that things dissolve is to put too much salt in so that it hasn't dissolved, right? It, it can't quite uh, dissolve in the way that it did before. And so now you're adding a new thing to it where you can see him that he gets to add more water to it. And we're working on how much water will you have to add so that it again can dissolve. So that this is, you know, adding another piece of it to that. Like, how can this happen? Uh, Jello, it's the same thing where you can uh, start out, it dissolves easily, but they'll get to a point where it doesn't dissolve as much. You know, I want to say one thing about Jello is obviously, you know, Jello, it says that you have to put boiling water and you wouldn't give this to your child with boiling water. But I found that even warm water will make it dissolve. And it, it doesn't set it quite as well, but you know, it's fine. So, so if you, it's not like you, if you wanted to, you still, you know, you still could still eat it. Um, you can also do, if you want some color mixing with Jello, if that's just a fun thing you want to do, but I'm at this point just focusing on dissolving. So I didn't, I didn't work on that. You can put some things in that seem harder to dissolve. And so at first it appears like it's not going to dissolve. It's just going to stick to the bottom, but they'll learn quickly that if they continue to mix it, it will dissolve. And again, I want to say one more time, things will dissolve a lot better in warm water, which they figure out on their own too. Um, yeah, back, segueing back to when he's uh, noticing that happened before with the seed, the, um, little seed things and he's like saying hot 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 like yay like this is a lot better with the hot water you know they'll he, they'll start to pick this up even as one-year-olds they'll start to pick up these big ideas of how to make this work and one fun thing to do is to put cold water in and show them in the situation like molasses they it, maybe it doesn't seem like it's going to dissolve pour it out put in the warm water and you don't even have to talk that much about it they'll start to think about it which is what you want to happen right that they're thinking about all these little 
pieces of, of how things work. And you know, how this brain is just exploding with these ideas of learning to think for themselves. What's gonna happen next? How does this work? What's the variable? At any rate, so you can, the next thing that we're gonna try is the exception to the rule, and that is oil. Now, it's very interesting here. If you, I don't know if this is gonna work out when we actually do it, but you can hear him saying over and over again, no, 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 and can't believe it. Can you believe it? Because he knows enough about the world as a one-year-old, he's done this kind of thing enough that he knows that this is not supposed to happen. Things are supposed to mix together. So you hear him say, no, no, over and over again, because he has already, again, this is working, this process is working where he's figuring out like, this is not supposed to happen, right? The oil's not gonna mix. And so he's gonna try his very hard mixing and mixing and mixing, but he's still gonna end up with those things on the top. At one part, he even says to me like, cold, cold? Like, is the problem that the water is too cold? And so we're going to you know, drain, it, drain it out and try it again. And he's gonna get the idea that it didn't dissolve, it didn't mix in. And that's a great experience too, right? He's understanding that things don't always there's, you know, there's exceptions to the rule. And how can you figure out what they are and what does it happen and how does that go? So, you know, <clears throat> these are, I hope that you enjoy these. These are fun, fabulous things to do. Uh, with your children, but there are also things that are really building up those skills during this time when their brain is just growing and growing and growing and the brain development is growing. You're helping those tracks in their brain say, why did this happen? How did this happen? You know, what does this mean? To ask the questions instead of just be sort of passively a person sitting there, you know, watching something on the television. Renee, what do you think? Helen, this is really fantastic. You know, all of us, I mean, we love to spend lots of money buying these thinking toys and all of these things meant for our toddler's uh, brain development. But what we're doing here, these are things that are in his actual world. These are tangible things that he sees going on around him and you're showing him how they work so that he has this really clear understanding of how when you mix salt and water together that they dissolve and there's at a point where they don't dissolve. You're, these are not mysteries. These are not, this is not magic. This is science. This is critical thinking and logic and understanding. And I love that, that he gets something is different about that oil and water because of what he is built up to and what he knows about how um, dissolving and mixing things together works. And changing, I love the segment on changing shapes, um, changing the shape of the pasta by breaking it up and then cooking it and eating it. He sees the complete cycle of what is going on and what can go on and what is possible. Um, again, these are sensory, these are tactile, um, motor skills, everything is going into these activities. And the critical thinking that's going behind it for your toddler as they look around the world, it's, it's actively building those brain connections. This is not just about mixing water and salt and making salt water. This is about helping your child uh, develop, uh, their brain develop so that they become uh, critical thinkers, um, that they have the best brain development possible at this age at one. At one, he knows the oil and water should be mixing and why isn't it? And what can we do to fix this? Thanks, Renee. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making them. Uh, if you would love, if you would consider liking it and subscribing, it would be fabulous. We would love it. I, we're sending out some more along this line and I hope they give you fun things to do with your child, to bond even closer with you at home doing these things. Whether you want to do them because you just need some extra time, you want something fun to do, or you want the brain development to happen. They can all happen together in just a few minutes a day. Hope you have time for some of these activities. Thanks so much. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.